Dear brethren, we have the pleasure to have with us here at my right, Pastor Joas Barbosa. He is the current representative of canvassing from the South Union, South Brazilian Union. And we would like to invite him to expose the first message of this series of conferences that we start today. With the topic, Silent Messengers. With Brother Joas, the word. May God's grace and God's peace be with each and every one of us. Amen. A happy Sabbath to you. Greetings to all of you that are watching. Dear canvassers, our colleagues, Silent Messages, as it was announced, it is the name of today's topic. And I'd like to tell you that this word, messenger, has a very deep meaning. Let us see what is the meaning of this word. As you will see now on, on your screens, uh, we have here the definition of the word messenger. A messenger is someone who brings or takes a message, whether written or verbal. So that is what messenger means. Someone who brings or takes a message, whether verbal or whether written. Actually, in the past, uh, quite differently from today, the messages were sent by these messengers, as we call them today, or as we know them, you know, in our modern days, uh, postmans. But back in, in the ancient times, uh, they would run, these messages would run um, in order to bring these messages. They would have their own uniform, uh, their own uh, identity. They, they were hosted in uh, certain houses or certain places, let's call it like this, that would be... Uh, almost like one kilometer from one to another. And two other messengers would stay at the gate every during the day, during the night, and one would be facing to the right, one would be facing to the left. And when they would see someone coming, even if from a long distance, if they would see uh, the messenger in his uniform running towards the city, they would run towards him to meet him. Now, try, try to imagine this. Uh, a messenger comes with a message, and you see that uh, a messenger, another messenger is coming towards the city, and one is running towards each other in order to uh, receive that message as soon as possible. Now, that messenger, as, as they, as they uh, gather, um, they, he, that messenger had to get the message as accurately as possible and decorate or, or memorize it in order to pass it on. And then he would have to run, I don't know how many kilometers, depending on on how far he would have to travel with that message. Well, this, this job to the nowadays uh, doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. Someone that would run for such a long distance and would have to uh, bring that uh, memorized message. As I was researching this week, I noticed that messengers have a special duty in, in hot, hotels and, and hospitals. Uh, they are nowadays the ones that are receiving the ones that, that um, come to these um, facilities. 
Did you know that God is sending a message to us? God gave us a message that we may take it to other people. And we will read this in God's Word. Ezekiel 3 with 18. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him not warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. What an impacting text. God is sending a message to me, to you, and this message should reach or should be shared with many people that are about to die. And we are to share this message because if someone dies without receiving this message, we are guilty. So, as messengers, we need to take it, to bring it forward. In all fairness, you are a messenger because God bestowed upon you this responsibility. And the message sent by God could be uh, passed on by you, whether verbal, it could be shared by you through literature, and there is a tool that makes it easier, the sharing of this message, which, and this tool is the, 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 the canvasser, the canvassing. And this is a tool through which we can speak easier with the people, sharing the message. I'd like to read with you. Canvases must go out into various parts of the country. The importance of this work is fully equal to that of the ministry. The living preacher and the silent messengers are both required for the accomplishment of the great work before us. So we have here both the preacher and the silent messenger, which is the book. The, 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 live, the, the live messenger and the book. And they both have the same mission, to share the message for the completion of the work that is before us. And speaking of messenger, the Bible brings us various um, messages or various um, illustrations of people who accomplished their mission. And we read in Acts 5, verse 28, which says, Did not we straightly command you that you, you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine. Can you, can you understand, can you comprehend the context of this text? The apostle received from God uh, an order. You should go. You need to go and preach the gospel. And the message at that time it was about the Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we see in this Bible verse, the apostles literally fulfilled this order. The Bible verse says that they filled the whole Jerusalem with the doctrine of Christ. And, and this, the Jews or the Jewish leaders, they were, they were frustrated with, uh, as we can see by their reaction in this verse. It would be so good if in our city people could speak the same thing. Look, you, you fill the whole city with this message. 
And this is able, uh, this we could accomplish because we are messengers, and messengers should and need to bring forth to, to share this message. We have to be carrying this message. It is, is it, it is it is a duty that was bestowed upon us. Many people have great aspirations. Some people have, want to be great preacher, uh, great preachers, which is wonderful. Uh, to be able to share the message with the people from the pulpit is great. And some people even manage to. They, they are people with great talent, great oratory, while some other people, they go through some difficulties. I want to share with you a story, a very interesting story that happened um, with George Albert King. A young man of 20 years, he wanted to be a preacher. But in his first sermon, he went through some serious difficulties. His sermon was a catastrophe. He took with him the script, but while he was speaking, his script fall, uh, fell, and the graph that that he prepared, you know, tear apart and. He, he was rather disappointing, disappointed with, with, with his performance. But the people that watched him, they, they, they felt compassionate towards him. And one, one lady um, stood up and said to him, you need to understand that your calling is a different calling. You need to understand that you can speak with people in their homes, and there you can talk to them about Jesus Christ. And this idea went uh, was good. And he went from house to house, um, giving them flyers, literature, sharing the message in various a. Uh, ways and uh, George Albert King became the first canvassers of our church. And someone who wanted to become a very great preacher became the reference for all canvassers. And you perhaps may be in the same situation. You may want or have a certain aspiration, but who knows if God has not given you this talent as well. Actually, there are people who were called and people who were not. And we are we can read, uh, Sister Wise says that there are some who are adapted to the work of the canvasser and who can accomplish more in this line than by preaching. So, as we can see from this um, paragraph, um, there are people who adapt better to canvassing than to preaching or to some, some, some other line. Because public speaking is not an easy task. Here you can see us doing it. And I can't see how many people are before the screen. But it's not easy to talk to many people. But it's much easier to speak with one person, two people. And the work of canvassing brings us this possibility of talking one by one or talking with people individually. And there is another way in which the message can be taken uh, besides the verbal way. And this, this form, the Bible reveals in Revelation 21, 5, where it says, And he that sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are truth and faithful. So here we see John, the loved 
disciple, he received a vision, a vision of a new earth, and he was literally amazed by all that beauty. And after that vision, he heard the voice of Jesus giving him an order. Write, for these words are true and faithful. Why did John have to write? Because someone would read. We are talking here about literature. Are we, talk we are talking here about books. For example, the Bible is composed by 66 books. Holy people that were inspired by God wrote, and the whole Bible was inspired by God. I want to tell you that the Bible is very important to us. What would be of us Christians without the Bible? How many stories would, would us have lost during the years? Uh, and in all fairness, the, the Word of God is an amazing art. We can read it daily. And thus, our hope grows daily because we have a heaven awaiting for us. The end of the story of this world full of sin, where so many evil things happen, is coming, is coming closer and closer. And when we look to this Bible verse, to this message, that God said to John, write, because these words are faithful. There is a new world. There is a perfect world. How good is for us to read the message as such. This, give, this inspires us. This gives us hope. Because it was written. You see how important is this message being written? And the Bible talks to us daily if we would open it and read it, since it is inspired by God. And in the Bible we find 66 books. We received this message and we could, we could call the Bible a silent, messengers, a silent messenger, can we? The, the literature is something very, very important. Some time ago, someone called Albert Stauffer, he was sent to South America. And arriving here in South America, in South America, he was not uh, uh, a speaker of this language. He, he came from uh, Europe, he was speaking very fluently German and English, and he took along with him various boxes full of books. And when he arrived here, he was looking for people that were talking his language. He, he found certain uh, communities, certain German, English communities. And he passed quite, quite some time in Uruguay. And two years afterwards, he entered Brazil. And when he came to Brazil in 93, he was still having this difficulty of the language, but little by little he was he was getting, uh, he was adapting. And he was canvassing in Curitiba on the day of 13th of January, 1986. And he knocked to a, a house and one lady opened and this lady she, she was working for a, re, a very rich family actually various rich families and she received the literature she received the book that was called the life of jesus and this lady she was amazed with this piece of literature what a content 
And afterwards, she received the message of Adventism. Adventism. Her name was Anna, and her husband was Otto. And they came to Adventism. And they were the first to become Adventist in the state of Parana. You see what what the literature can do and what are the results of this mess of these silent messengers which are the books the difference that these silent messengers do is rather great i like to read with you publication must be multiplied and scattered scattered like the leaves of the autumn these silent messengers are enlightening and molding the minds of thousands in every country and in every clime. The world is to receive the light of truth through an ev evangelizing ministry of the word in our books and periodicals. The publication must be multiplied and we need more and more, more literature to arrive in the homes of the people. Because many times you and I won't have free access to people's homes, but the literature that silent messengers can. And one book that we, whether donated or sold, will do that which sometimes we can't. We need to make the most of these opportunities today to leave these silent messengers in the hands of someone. The Spirit of Prophecy says, golden opportunities occur almost daily, where the silent messengers of truth might be introduced into families and to individuals. I want to tell you, there, in your job, in your profession, you must do your job as a messenger beside your, your current job. Although you may not be able to preach to your colleagues in, during your working time, but you can leave with them some sort of literature. I'd like to show you the photo of um, a brother from our church that has a, that has a very interesting job. He is a landscaper. He's also a sculptor, and he does various monuments and landscape, beautiful landscape. And our brother Nevis, he has this wonderful job. And in this job, he is a canvasser. Although he doesn't have a, a specific time to open the Bible and preach, he does this job. And a few months ago, he bought a huge uh, quantity of uh, literature, um, the, um, the book, interior, inter or How to Find Interior Peace. It's a very small booklet. And he asked for authorization for, from the manager of a, a huge uh, chain of hotels that he was working. He asked, uh, he asked uh, if he may be able to donate those booklets. And he was able to uh, distribute 280 booklets. And he was able to share with each and every one of these workers. From the, from the hotel. And one week ago, <clears throat> one week after that event, um, um, a worker from there came, approached him and asked, uh, what church are you, are you going to? I, I read this booklet that you gave me and what a wonderful booklet. I'd like to, to know your church. And he was able to uh, bring that woman with her uh, children to the church and she was totally totally admired with the message that she heard at, ch uh, at the church 
And everything started with a booklet, How to Find Interior Peace. What a rich content in such a cheap um, booklet. And Sister Alexandra was baptized last year. What a wonderful experience. She and her two children are in the church today. Have you noticed in your day-to-day -day the opportunities to leave these silent messages with the people that are around you? Try to imagine this every day. Obviously, for this, you must have with you some sort of literature, wherever you may be, whether booklets or books, or well, if you can donate, are wonderful. If you can't, then you, you, can, you can sell. But those are golden opportunities which are given to us to share the gospel. And the Holy Spirit will definitely impress this truth upon their minds. In the same way, the Holy Spirit is working in your heart and in the hearts of all the people that are watching this message. The Holy Spirit and the holy angels will go before this message and before these silent messages to open the hearts of the ones that will receive it. And I'd like to read with you in Christian services that says, the world to receive the light of truth through the evangelizing ministry of the word in our books and periodicals. Our publication are to show that the end of all things is at hand. What is the type of literature for our days? Literature that shows or presents the moment that we are living. The fact that the end of all things is drawing near. And this kind of literature we are to share with the world. It's fundamental. And I would like to leave with you one more text. And the Spirit of Prophecy says, more than 1,000 will soon be converted in one day, most of whom will trace their first convictions to the reading of our publication. publications. Yes, books or booklets like those ones that you saw on the screen, Prof prophetic contents like the prof prophecies of Daniel, prophecies of Revelation, great controversy. These are messages for our day. And we are to share them. We need to be looking for opportunities, for the opportunities that are given us. And many would be reached. And you cannot lose this opportunity of being someone that will share these silent messengers. Booklets, books, magazines, they must be donated or given. And a last text that I'd like to um, share with you is in the book Evangelization 120. It says, the Lord calls for the workers to enter the canvassing field, that the books containing the light of present truth may be circulated. The people in the world need to know that the signs of the times are fulfilling. Take to them the books that will enlighten them. Is, is an order. Take or bring to them the books that will enlighten them. That God may enlighten you and I. That in our hands will never be a lack of these silent messages which we may share with the people around us. You can be a live messenger and by God's grace you may share these silent messengers. You can be a canvasers and may God bless you in this work and may God bless us all. Amen. Dear Father, 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life, for the privilege of having received your message. We would like to surrender ourselves in this moment, Father. We would like to be messengers for the current days. We would like to bring to the world the message that they so much need. And when we need, when need be that we may fall, and when not, that the silent messages might be able to share the messages that you have prepared for our time. And that thirsty souls may be fulfilled, may be filled, and many might have the conviction of this message. And there in heaven, of seeing the fruits of our work. Take in your hand our dear canvases, that they may continue full of energy, full of zeal to continue in this ministry. Bless the leaders of your church, that they may continue with the advancement of this ministry of canvassing, that soon everyone would receive the message and touch in the hearts of the ones that will, that already participated during uh, uh, within this ministry. And also for our brethren that are watching, that they may see in their daily activities opportunity for them to share literature and speak as much as possible of this message. Continue with us and give us an excellent program going forward and prepare us for the second coming. In the name of Jesus, amen.